Welcome to Flashback Friday. In this episode of The Radio Vagabond, I spent two days in the Enchanted Farm in the Philippines. The farm is much more than just agriculture, as you'll get to hear in this episode that was first released in December 2016. Welcome to Flashback Friday, and Happy New Year. This morning, I woke up for my first day as a volunteer on a farm north of Manila in the Philippines. It was early in the morning and I went outside with my microphone, but all of a sudden I lost my concentration when some more wonderful children walked by. It's day number two now at the volunteer working tour, on the, on the volunteering working tour. And I just stepped outside. And now there's a bunch of kids walking by. Good morning. Welcome to the Radio Vagabond podcast. My name is Palabo and I'm still in the Philippines and still working as a volunteer with the organization Gawat Kalinga. If you haven't listened to the first of my episode here from the Philippines, you might want to stop right now and then go back and listen to that one. And now I'm on a farm. They call it the Enchanted Farm, but it's so much more than a farm. We start by getting a tour by Sophie. A 25-year-old redhead from Hamburg. I'm Sophie, my last name is Mather, and I'm 25 years old, and I'm here at the farm with a social enterprise, Mad Travel, Make a Difference Travel. It's the kind of feeling that you have on the Enchanted Farm. There is an infectious atmosphere of making a difference. I came here a year ago and started as a volunteer, and now I live here. Yeah. yeah, so, um, but I'm not based at the farm all the time. So I'm working with my travel and community development, and I travel basically all around the Philippines. When we, whenever we start um, working with the GK community or even the indigenous community, and I'm out there and I start working with them, basically asking them to find out what their problems are, skills, all those things. Sophie told me that she had a good job back in Germany, but wanted to do something more meaningful. What triggered your decision to go do volunteer work in the Philippines? Um, actually, that's a good question. I finished my university there, like I graduated, and then um, I worked for a corporate, but I was quite bored and not really fulfilled. And I was just looking for something different, like something more meaningful and more fulfilling and something where I can share and meet people. It's a project that you want to be a part of. We met volunteers from Canada, Colombia and France on the farm. Like Sophie, many of them were only supposed to be there for a short visit but ended up staying longer. And it is much more than regular agriculture. So we call the GK Enchanted Farm a Farm Village University. And it's actually the first farm village university in the world because it's really about uh, the village, which is the GK community, uh, the farm, which is uh, everything about organic farming, agriculture, back, back to the roots basically and um, focusing on bringing um, more value into farming and agriculture in the Philippines. Gawakalinga has a lot of social entrepreneurships. Among the things they produce, cosmetics, chocolates, ice cream, juice and everything they make is healthy, organic and sustainable. And teddy bears. But there's also plenty of agriculture. Ducks, chickens, pigs, sheep and goats. We actually get the task of capturing goats and tagging them with numbers so they can tell them apart. I need, I need the pen. There you go. I like how they stick their tongues out. Will this not fall off? And Gavakalinga pays their employees a salary that is above the average and give them more leisure time than most other workplaces. Speaking of salaries, how much is a normal salary? I've heard that they're low, so I talked to a Filipino about it. My guess is that he's in the mid-40s and he's an experienced tour operator, so he's not on a starting salary. He tells me that he gets a daily wage of around 500 pesos. That's around 9.5 euros, or 10 US. With a five-day work week, that gives him a monthly salary of around 200 euros, 215 US. He says that anything above that would be lucrative. Yeah, that's the word he used, lucrative. 
He tells me about his father who at one point had kidney problems and had to be in dialysis. And they needed money for that. And as his son, he was the one going to get the money. In 18 months, he managed to raise the money. He worked double shift and borrowed from everyone he could borrow from. Eventually, he had to give up. He couldn't do it anymore. His father told him, Son, I know that you've done so much. It's okay. And shortly after that, he died. This is another side of the Philippines. Gavakalinga, or GK, have a declared goal to eradicate poverty for 5 million Filipino families before 2024. There's also a university on site where young people from disadvantaged families are given the opportunity to educate themselves through scholarships. And uh, then the university, which is the seed college, where um, kids from the surrounding areas are uh, sponsored uh, students and they learn everything about social entrepreneurship. The last evening we met a lot of those young students for a very special dinner. They call it boodle fight and it's a very Filipino way of eating. In a large room an 8 to 10 meter long table was set up. On the table there were palm leaves and then an 8 to 10 meter long line of rice. On one side of the rice were vegetables and on the other side meat sauce. It looked very impressive. It's not a high table, regular height actually, but we were all standing. And then someone said, go ahead. And we began to eat with our hands. Rice, vegetables and meat sauce with our hands. And after a few minutes I find out why they call it boodle fight. The very hungry teenager beside me is finished eating the part of the food that's in front of him, so he begins to eat the food that is in front of me. I speak out my first thought. I say, hey you, that's my food, or something to that extent. He just smiles and continue eating my food. After approximately 10 minutes, all the food is gone. And the long table is turned into a battlefield. Extremely festive and very Filipino. I asked Sophie if they have a lot of tourist activities on the farm. Uh, yeah, we do. We have activities um, organized here at the farm, which is, for example, loving our land, where people are just coming to volunteer, or we have uh, just day visitors, and they're just uh, exploring the farm um, with social enterprises and just have demos and a farm tour. Um, a lot of Filipinos come from Manila and um, just discover a, a different face of Gavit Galinga because everyone knows Gavit Galinga as the NGO basically building houses and the GK Enchanted Farm shows, I guess, a lot more. Mm. And the, here at the farm, I think we have around 60,000 guests every year wow. from all over the world. I would say all of the guests we have here are inspired. People love animals so much People from all over the world have the opportunity to come and spend one or multiple days on the farm to help as a volunteer, to have a meaningful holiday. And this is where MAD Travels comes into the picture. Make a difference travel, a sort of travel agency that works with Gavit Kalinga. I met the co-founder and the head of MAD Travel, Rafael Denisha. My name is Rafael Denisha. I'm 30 years old, a Filipino, born and raised in the Philippines. He's a 30-year-old guy from the very small part of the population who are born into a reasonable, well-off, middle-class family. Despite this, he got involved as a volunteer on the Enchanted Farm. And um, I ended up as a volunteer there uh, because uh, I was exposed to pocket events in the city. No? Um, I'm a business uh, stu- a business uh, major, and so I was curious, what is this uh, social entrepreneurship? So I went to a talk, and that's where I heard um, the founder of GK and the Enchanted Farm, uh, Tony Miloto, speak about um, business with purpose, about um, solidarity, about making sure that, uh, about how the real measure is not in the dollar, the pesos or dollars you earn, but in the number of lives you change, and... Um, 
at that time I was working in a multinational selling sanitary napkins and panty liners <laughs> and so uh, I thought I, I thought I want to be part of that I feel like that's more purposeful and if there's a way for me to become sustainable on my own and help more people I think that's uh, that's better for me no? and yeah. um, but you have a, a starting your, your, your own career and uh, you could just choose to make money for yourself and your family with this job and this education that you were lucky enough to have uh, but were you missing some meaning in your life uh, definitely definitely because um, uh, what what I was doing back then is I would save my money and then I'd just travel you know? and so I was always traveling for adventure's sake and um, I remember showing uh, Tito Tony the pictures oh we went to this place and that place and this place and he just wasn't interested wasn't impressed and I was like how how do you impress this guy no? uh, and then I began to see that he was impressed when what impressed him was uh, people really uh, sacrificing and putting effort into changing the lives of the poor no? uh, and uh, it, it was the first time that I had uh, been exposed to a paradigm or a framework where success wasn't money it was where success was uh, bringing others with you And uh, yeah, that uh, that changed my world. And so that, and when he asked me, uh, please volunteer with me. Uh, why don't you join our team? I'll work with us on the Enchanted Farm. I just said yes. Yeah, and uh, cut your your salary in uh, a, a tenth of what you're making now. <laughs> well, I don't I don't earn anything in the Enchanted no, exactly. Farm. <laughs> That's the thing. You get you get a discount on your food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So instead of paying three hundred, I'll pay like yeah, one third of that or something. Um, Yeah, but uh, I started as a volunteer, no? And then when we saw that um, there's a branch of tourism, which, which we call social tourism, that is supposed, that can really help uh, communicate the vision, inspire people to do something, and of course, make money uh, for the farm to become sustainable. Uh, that's where I was placed because uh, I, at least I enjoy travel and I'm very, uh, I'm generally very friendly, no? So that's where I started. And um, we set up the tourism Uh, in the farm, the tours, uh, the demos, and everything, and uh, yeah, it was, it's very good. And, and at least today, what we see is uh, the tourism helps keep the farm sustainable, and hopefully, it continues to inspire people uh, when they come. And and you have some some different kinds of uh, tours in, in, in Mad Travel. Uh, that's true. So um, Mad Travel, uh, Mad means make a difference, and basically. We called it MAD because uh, when you travel, you usually travel for pleasure. But this time we're saying travel for purpose just as much as you travel for pleasure. Oh, that's MAD. Yeah, yeah. And that, and that was MAD for many of our friends. We're like, what? You're crazy. Travel to a farm to feed chickens and goats? What? Why? It's not relevant. I want, you know. Uh, and it, it takes a while to explain uh, how, uh, why it's uh, is that, um, relevant to us. You know? But basically, we thought that... Um, You can make a difference um, in almost anything you do. And why not start with the most fun and the sexiest of activities uh, for anyone in this world, which is travel. I heard so many stories uh, when I was at the Enchanted Farm from people who started up uh, just taking a, a, a few days, days like uh, like we've been on here for the last couple of days, and, and then uh, deciding to stay for six months, and some of them stayed even longer that's true um, one of my uh, friends Fabian he's the guy who uh, he's not here now but he started the toy business plush and play he originally came here just for a, uh, for a short internship yeah he, he was like 23 at the time and uh, from France and um, he came here just a few days yeah yeah he was supposed to be here for I think a few months and um, he he was uh, lured in by the vision of Um, the Silicon Valley of social entrepreneurship, uh, which is supposed to be the Enchanted Farm, but back then it was really just a patch of grass with a small village. Yeah. And so when he, uh, yeah, instead of complaining about it, he helped build it uh, to what it is today. No. And um, originally he was supposed to start with a bamboo business. I'm not sure if they'd mentioned that on the farm, but uh, there was no bamboo. Yeah. <laughs> so he's like, it's gonna take me five years to grow my supply chain. Let's start with something more relevant, and that's how they started with um, toys. Yeah, now now they're making because we were there, and they're making 
plush toys, uh, all the it's like vegetables and fruits, yeah, fruit uh, and uh, that's also the kids play with it and uh, get a, a, a sense that it's it's good <laughs> to 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 eat more healthy. Yeah, that's true. Actually, it's ironic that um, in school they teach us uh, fruits and vegetables uh, from the West, <laughs> and so Fabian was like, "Well, we may we should teach people how to eat local fruits and vegetables, no? and make it fun. So let's make toys because Filipinos are notorious for not eating vegetables, fruits, uh, they'll eat. Yeah. And so yeah, a lot of rice, a lot of <laughs> too much. <laughs> yeah, we're addicted to it." Uh, but yeah, and, and he's been quite successful at it. Um, in fact, he's the first, he's partnered with a couple of Filipinos here. But this is the first Filipino brand that is present in the largest toy store in the country. How, that's how ironic is that? No? Uh, and it just goes to show that the industry of toys and almost everything in this country is imported. Uh, and the irony is um, we can produce almost everything we consume. It's just that we need um, people to um, commit and to you know use their talents and work with others so that they can create uh, products that are that we can be proud of no? whether it's chocolate we import 80% of that or um, dairy products we import 90% of the dairy products we buy dairy from Singapore which is ironic because they don't have cows or goats no? so yeah so so people who are listening to this might think oh I want to do this uh, so uh, when they go on your website, you have some some different tours, and it's not all just working as a volunteer. It's also going to to see some of the beautiful sites Definitely. that you have here. Um, so the, the concept, uh, if you log onto our website, uh, madtravel.org, uh, you will see different um, packages and different destinations. No? And the whole point is to try to mix, is to try to create uh, three different experiences uh, for your uh, travel. No? One is, of course, there's the fun slash rest and relaxation. And then there is um, uh, so exposure to social entrepreneurship. And then there is uh, also humanitarian service uh, involved, whether it's um, helping the environment or um, house building you know, uh, for the poor. And, and the whole point is for you to see that when you, uh, the whole point is we want to encourage you to come as a traveler, uh, but to leave as a friend or family. You know? And that it's is exactly what I'm doing now. I've met so many wonderful, smiling and welcoming Filipinos. This has been a unique experience. But now I'm moving on. I am staying here in the Philippines, but I want to see some of the beautiful scenery and get to use my paddy scuba diving license. And that's why I'm going to the islands of Bohol and Cebu, located a little further south. The last words of this podcast comes from Luis Oquino, the executive director of Gawa Kalinga. So I, I decided that my life, no matter how short, I wanted to make it relevant because at the end uh, when you look at your tombstone it'll be date of birth and date of death right and then there's a dash so your whole life is actually defined by a dash so my question is what is that dash for me and I've decided that that dash will be GK until the last breath my name is Palapo and I gotta keep moving